All right, welcome back to Podcast 33 of 2019. I'm your host, Kiev O'Neill. You can tweet us at The Odds Breakers. Follow us on social media, slash The Odds Breakers. And we are actually getting our YouTube page. Well, we started it recently, but we're going to get it ramped up and give out, hopefully... Our plan is to give out at least one free pick a week during the football season. So if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube page, good things are about to come. I've been currently working on some college football season win totals. They are all out. Been studying them, researching the teams, deeper dives. And definitely putting some bets down. So please let us know if you have any questions about that. Tweet us at the odds breakers. This episode is being brought to you by betonline.ag. For a 50% bonus, please visit the odds breakers slash betonline. Click the banner and you will get a bonus for the upcoming football season. Terms and conditions apply. If you'd like to help us out, and sponsor our podcast, we would love to help you out. Please visit theodsbreakers.com, click shop, and become a member for only $12.99 a month still. You can become that member and get my picks and premium picks before the line moves. For $2 more, you get all that. If you become a patron subscriber and access to the podcast a little bit early, if nothing else, please visit theodsbreakers.com and become a free picks newsletter subscriber and we got picks going out left and right some baseball some nascar and just let you know if you become a free subscriber to the website i have a little uh free members picks that i am 13 and 4 at (laughs) and uh it started at the uh, the end of the nba season did some nba bets and a lot of baseball bets and um, i just happen to be doing really well there great start so just want to let you know that is available uh, these Vegas season win totals are out, and they're also out on Bet Online. So, if you don't have an account there and would like to hit some of these totals, uh, check out the Asbreakers.com slash Bet Online and get that bonus. And uh, I'm going to be giving out a free pick of a season win total at the end of this podcast. But first, this podcast. I'm going solo. We are going to discuss a little bit of the article that I wrote for the bettingbuck.com. It's bettingbuck.com over there with Joey Shattuck. And uh, it's an introduction to sports betting 101. There's probably a lot of new uh, sports bettors out there. I've noticed a lot of new Listeners to the odds breakers, I'm not sure if you're new to sports betting, but uh, in case you are, I'd like to share some of the best practices. I really suggest you go to thebettingbuck.com and read the article. It's got a ton of information. I worked a few weeks on this article um, about the do's and don'ts, kind of the ins and outs of sports betting. But in this podcast, I'm going to cover some of the highlights of that, um, you know, just to kind of uh, in case you don't like reading articles and, uh, you know, to fill in during All-Star Week. And so we're going to do that and want to make sure that you know that we are always listening to feedback. Please feel free to give us any suggestions, to tweet us at The Odds Breakers, send us a message through our contact us. If you'd like to contribute, we'd love to hear from you. All right. Well, without further ado, let's get into a little bit of lessons in sports betting. And it's probably best to start out with kind of how I started out the article. Sports betting in itself, unless you are making very large wages, and I would, I'm would, i even going to go into the five figures, um, this is not something you're going to make a living at. And you have to be very diligent 
to uh, be profitable. As a matter of fact, the best sports bettors out there in their lifetime is about 56%. And sure, you're going to see some people up at 60 that's only been doing it for three years. Maybe they had a 70% year. But to be honest with you, if people are saying they're consistently going to be better than 60%, please run for the hills. The best of the best are literally at 56%. That number sounds low, but it's actually not that low. And I'm going to explain why that is a little bit later in this podcast. Sports betting should be done for fun. You should do it because you enjoy sports. Maybe... Uh, a lot of people from Ohio, and sorry, I'm going to rip on you guys a little bit, are sports bettors. And maybe the reason that is, is because when your team sucks, you can still love sports and have a significant influence, or not influence, but a, a, a significant fan investment in a game because you might have a wager on it. You know, so if your sports teams have sucked for years, you can always sports bet and still enjoy the hell out of sports. And that's what a lot of people do. That's why I do it. I, I, I'm a Chicago fan and they've been bad for years in most sports. And, uh, maybe that's why I got into it back in 2002. 2003 is when I really started. Probably didn't get good till 2010, but I went through the, you know, the, the, the whole beginner's luck and then, the whole dip on where I didn't know anything and then kind of had to build myself up and learn. And by 2010, 2011, I was kind of in a much better situation to become consistently profitable. But it's a, it's a long journey and it's a fun journey and uh, it feels good to win and it feels good to be right. And that's why we do it. Um, Some people do it for a specific investment. Some people will actually, uh, you know, start with a, a chunk of money, um, and they'll either do all the work, which some of the best sports players in the world work about 70, 80 hours a week, um, and uh, and they'll they'll place their bets. Maybe they have easy income coming in. Maybe they're retired. I don't know. To be, or they're making those five figure bets, or you buy, purchase picks from a professional sports better that puts in the time and the work. Uh, me being a podcast host. Um, I wear a lot of hats, actually. I handicap a ton of games, but I'm not even going to say that I'm a professional sports better. And it's not that I don't put in uh, 50 to 60 hour weeks during the seasons, because sometimes I definitely do. Um, I try to focus on conferences so I can be really good at one thing and have more money on that conference than just in general, because that's how much time it takes. The professionals will put hours and hours into every single conference. And sometimes even then we'll have a conference focus where they uh, tend to bet a little bit more. So um, that's what it is. It's uh, it's an investment in your time. Um, you can make 15 to 20% return if you're doing extremely well. Um, if you're 60%, that's uh, like a 15% return on your money. So uh, if you're, you have to be above 52.38% to be profitable, and I'm going to um, go into that a little bit. But if you're not careful, sports betting just becomes a, a big roulette table, okay? So uh, just know that these casinos, they didn't build themselves. Uh, they, uh, you know, they definitely uh, make their money, and, and over 90% of people that sports bet come up losing, you know, and that's how, um, that's why they're profitable. And that's why you see so many sports books popping up all over the place. So getting getting into what I was discussing, uh, the way sports books primarily make their money, besides people losing more than not, is they have a VIG or a juice. You have to lay $110 to win a $100 bet. Now, you might think that the juice is 10% or better, yet 9 um, 10%, 9.09%, but it's not. The juice is really 4.55%. And because you're looking at it the wrong way, you have to look at it the way it really is. The books are putting up money against you because they have to. They have to bet against you. They put up the line, you make the bet, they have to put up the money against you. So it's really like two people putting up $110 and then $10 goes to the bookmaker 
and the winner takes $210 back. What is that other $10? Well, it's 4.55% of the wage. So uh, to give you an example, if you're just throwing darts uh, at, at sides of sports bets, you know, you should be basically down 4.55% of your money. Okay. Because that is the rate. Uh, Vegas or sports books should be on average after a long period of time, um, 50% on one side and 50% on the other. And that's how they make their money. And just that straight up one-sided bet or totals bet or spreads bet. I mean, there's a lot of other bets that people make. We'll get into that later. Now, the reason that sports bettors are only 56% accurate is because there's just so many large variances within the games, the officiating, the play calling, the coaching, the momentum swings, the fatigue. You know, play teams get tired, right? And you don't maybe the game was going faster than they expected. Injuries, the actual plays that are called, and just flat out the way the ball bounces. I mean, there's just so much variance that changes it. So as long as the sports better, like I said, wins at least fifty two point three point eight. 52.38% of his bets, he's going to be profitable at a standard minus 110 or 4.55% rake of the payout. So here's an example. At 53%, if a better hits 53 out of 100 bets and each bet is $100, he makes 90.9%. Nine, you know, ninety dollars and ninety cents of each hundred dollar bet of the fifty three. You multiply that by fifty three, and the total take home is four thousand eight hundred seventeen. So don't forget to mine out minus out the forty seven bets that they lost, because this is out of a hundred bets, which is forty seven hundred dollars, and literally a hundred dollar better on average. His total profit for the season is one hundred and seventeen dollars. 4,817 minus 4,700. So that's how hard it is to become profitable. Now, if they won 60% of those bets, they win $5,454 minus the $4,000 that was lost. So you win a profit of $1,454. You know, it's barely a month's rent um, in some places, but it's definitely nice to be up 14.5 units, right? 60% is great. $1,000 $1,000 better is a $14,000 profit, and a $10,000 better is a $145,000 profit on 60%. But like I said, 60% is high. So hopefully you understand that a little bit better. Obviously, check out the article if you don't. Um, make sure you check up on the sports books you bet at. Um, bettingbuck.com has all that information on who charges the least amount of fees if you're doing something offshore or um, if you're doing something in uh, the United States, who has the best lines. Uh, you know, you, you probably should read up on that and pick the best books out there. Um, you also want to know who has the lines out first because I'll tell you right now, in the NFL, it is best to bet the lines as soon as they come out and right before the games start or at least after the public gets in. You know, you want to bet stale lines. You know, if you're going to listen to a lot of advice, you know, unfortunately, a lot of the time, those lines have been hit already, and you might not get that number because it's all a huge numbers game. Every half point counts, and that's why I say to use a minimum of three sports books. Minimum, you know. It's not like you try a beer and you only drink that beer and you're not going to try any other beer. You don't just shop at one store. You shop at multiple stores and look for the best deals. You know, it's like buying a house. You're not going to buy the first house you look at. You're going to look at others and find the best deal best situation for yourself that's how it is when you're shopping lines every half point counts another mistake people make 
they don't use proper bankroll management because there's streaks where you can win 15 bets in a row. 